Life is a wild adventure, and to me, it's always been one. I grew up with a crazy family, traveling and moving around a lot. A potato sack racing contest. And chased a career as a TV reporter. Haley Winslow, Channel 4, the local station. Right, Tal? <laughs> but seven years later, I was itching to be free. Put it on like a You know what? Pack. This is over. So I turned down an anchor dream job and bought a one-way ticket to Australia. With no plan or money, I lived out of a backpack with my carefree cousin and guided ocean kayak tours. That's when I paddled into this Aussie goofball. Hey. Scotty, who encouraged me to show the world what this place is all about. With Sadie Grudel and a little crew, we did just that. And this is where the adventure continues. From Red Earth Outback to the depths of the deep blue, we're on the adventure of a lifetime journeying through Australia. Daringly, action-packed with some of the world's deadliest creatures, craziest characters. Oh, Chase, seriously. And my furry sidekick, Sadie. You're in for one wild ride. Hold on tight. Pretty rough out here. I'm Haley Winslow. Boomerang. <laughs> and this. And this. And this is out back and under. In today's adventure, this is like a puzzle. We cruise out to the Great Barrier Reef to one of the best wreck dives on Earth. Jump ship. Woo! We're going somewhere! And into a hot pink convertible and on horseback in the ocean. Daybreak, in the middle of a shipping channel. Sadie, the team, and I are nearly on top of the best shipwreck dive on the planet, the SS Yungala. So the story goes, at 1.40 p.m. on March 23rd, 1911, the Yungala was heading from Melbourne up to Cairns and didn't know about an approaching hurricane or a cyclone. The storm hit, and the Dent Island lighthouse keeper was the last one to see the ship go by. It sank, and then the Royal Navy found it in 1940s. Oh, how big is this ship? So it's 100 meters long. Okay. And 300 feet. Uh, it's a little off. Sort of like my stinger suit. Did I put this on backwards? I totally did. Yep. <laughs> That's why I do better when I get in the water. The Yungala is a very technical and often dangerous dive. Clearly, I can't do math or dress myself this morning, but fortunately, I'm with Heather Batrick, who used to direct dive trips here for a dozen years. I think it's going to be awesome today. We've just heard from the skipper that he can actually see the wreck from the surface, so that is very rare that happens, so I'm That really means the excited. visibility is really, really good. It means the visibility should be really good. Exciting. Awesome. Dive dance! Dive dance! Dive dance! Dive dance! Dive dance. Remember, we're gonna deflate to the sand and also deflate to ascent. Make sure you don't go straight down because that'll go down to the seabed. We want to go across to the ship. Right? I'll follow you. Yeah, follow me. <laughs> One last question. We're in the middle of a shipping channel. How do we make sure we don't get in the middle of a sure ship's path yeah. if we well, come up? Well, they avoid the Yongala because there's an isolated danger mark over there and it's also on every GPS, every map. So you can see the ships in the background. <laughs> Great. Yeah! Hey, they don't run out of air, right? It's you not either. an option. You can't have any of mine either. Gloves. <laughs> When you first go down, you don't even necessarily realise that it's a ship there. From the from the stern of the ship, it's pretty much covered in coral. Yeah. So, you know, you can go down and, and just think that this is a reef, and it's not till you get part of the way down the wreck that you actually see metal and go, ah, it is a shipwreck. You take and you it see in, the mass. Yeah. yeah. The SS Yungala lies listing on her starboard side, still structurally sound, with portholes and railings rusting for more than a century. The steel ship was built in England for an Australian steamship company and named after a town in South Australia with a population of 240 people. To the Aboriginals, Yungala means good water. She sailed for eight years and 99 voyages to this final resting place for her and all 122 passengers and crew on board. But from such tragic death comes so much life. This now thriving ecosystem is home to so much diversity these venomous olive sea snakes. Harmless nurse sharks sitting on the sandy bottom. Resident Queensland grouper, or groper to the Aussies, often hanging at the bow. The strikingly unusual Maui wrasse. Moray eels hiding in makeshift caves in the ship. And various species of snapper, like Moses perch. Red emperor, 
and mother-in-law fish, <laughs> named for their bad taste, all cohabitating at this wreck that has become an artificial reef and among the top 10 dives on the continent. A protected marine park under Commonwealth law, the SS Yungala is one of the largest and most well-preserved of the 8,000 shipwrecks in Australian waters. Mesmerized by the majesty surrounding this sunken ship, an endangered leopard shark snaps my attention, gracefully swimming just under the ocean's surface. I remember at one point you stopped me right at the end and you go, Look, and then I, I did, I, I kind of stopped for a second and looked around, and it was just a wall of fish. And you just swam in front of them, and they literally just, they just don't even move. They don't yeah. even move, you know. So. They're almost like, just pet me, pet yeah. me, like, stay here. <laughs> New to the underwater world as a recently certified diver, this is one of the most remarkable experiences I've ever had. Knowing we would soon run out of air, we swim back toward the stern of the ship, and hear male humpback whales serenading hopeful mates. Curtain call on the perfect dive imaginable. That was absolutely unbelievable. Oh my gosh, we saw sharks, sea snakes. What was that first shark we saw, Gray Nurse? Tawny nurse. A what a nurse? Tawny. Tawny nurse. Yeah. Oh, it was incredible. It was sitting right on the bottom on the sand. Good jump off. What did you think, Heather? Oh my god. That's why I love the Yongala. <laughs> Thank you. More fish than you can see anywhere. It's just awesome. It was unbelievable. And they were huge. And they're not afraid of you at all. <laughs> they're so friendly. I'm back and under. Mind blown by the Yungala, we continue north through the Coral Sea, trolling for lunch. And soon enough, fish on! It's a big fish. It is. The rod broke it. So big, he broke my rod. Oh, I see him. There he is. Spanish mackerel. Look at my pole. <laughs> This is what I was working with. Apparently, my work here is done. That was fun. Eight kilo Spanish mackerel. Look at those teeth. Captain Kyle's cleaning my fish at the stern. We've got the girls on the bow reading and catching some rays. And I'm in charge. We're heading to Townsville. Let's go. I'm not sure what any of these little charts mean, but I'm just going to stay right on this course. Welcome to Townsville, Australia. Fairly big, but with a small town feel. Home to a melting pot of military, students, old timers and tourists, and an average of 320 days of sunshine per year. <laughs> We need to pick up a few things, so Scotty, Sadie, and I hit the local Sunday farmer's market to see what Townsville is all about. Sadie, of course, makes a lot of new friends. We should charge for pony rides. Townsville is one of the largest cities in the top half of Australia. This Sunday market's a popular place to grab some tropical produce. I'm going to get some uh, papaya, as I know it. They call it papa for lunch. Townsville definitely has that real local feel to it. There are only about 180,000 people living here, but the locals call it the unofficial capital of North Queensland. We stopped to get Sadie some human-grade doggy bickies, Sadie. and I end up eating them. Wait, oh. <laughs> It's human food, I'm told. Come here, Sadie. It's really good. That one's really good. Yep, indigestion for the next three hours. I've eaten so much, I've eaten the dog's food. Thank you very much. <laughs> Definitely need something to wash down the dog food. Oh, jeez. Sadie, watch out. And I found just the remedy. Well, at least you know if you get stranded on a desert island, you can survive. <laughs> okay, you want to eat? Oh, it's so good. 
<laughs> Thank you. You want a cut one, do you? You want a big one? You want the big one? I believe in you. Thank you. I'm glad somebody knows. Left handed or right handed? I'm right handed. Okay, I'm not playing. What do I do? You've got to hang onto that with your hand. Okay. Let's try and slice that off, okay? Okay, watch out. Here we go. Ready? Count to three, someone. Count to three. One, two, two three. three. Whoa, that was. Uh, you ain't got enough power there. Oh, come on. All right. Yeah. Like I don't want to lose my hand. You won't, you won't be able to do it if you haven't got that. That's exactly what I was doing. Okay, you gotta hit it Just whack that thing around like it's a butter knife. Okay. There you go, straw in the coconut. Thank you. $4. $4. $4. Thank you. Here you go, Marla. Good? It's so good. Uh, <laughs> so refreshing, isn't it? Mm. I did all that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice day. <laughs> Thanks, Marlon. I, I think you could hire me. <laughs> Coconut Machete Man also makes sugar cane juice and lets me have a crack. Who's thirsty? <laughs> we can do this one. It's a lot easier. <laughs> This is the juice that comes from this oh, pine. It smells so good. The lime, that might be a bit hard to... Oh, that is so cool. So you're sticking ginger and lime in it. Okay. Right? Sugar cane, ginger, and lime, and you have sugar cane juice. Thank you. All right, back to Blinder for some real food. So I'm told because I caught the fish, I've got to cook it. And um, let's face it, I can't cook at all. So I'm going to have Alessandra help me. This is our awesome chef. All right, Spanish mackerel, how do you make it? We are going to make it in a barbecue. Okay. And we are going to have salad, some green beans, and a special mango salsa that's my specialty. Ooh. And you're going to like it. And while it cook, we're going to prepare our salsa. I might need to try that and make sure it's not poisonous. <laughs> Ooh, it's slimy. Just a little bit of red onion. Can I pour that in? Yes. My hands are clean-ish. Chop a little bit of the coriander. See how helpful I am. <laughs> just chop some meat. So you just roll when you want to chop your herbs. Helps you get all the flavor out, right? No, wrap helps you to hold it. Oh, okay. throw that in? Yeah. Now those chilies, I was told that they're really, really spicy. Yeah. So we are <laughs> just going to put a little tip of it. The lady at the market said, be very careful with these red hot yeah. chili peppers because so they're extra spicy. We're going to chop it really, really tiny as well. Okay. So no one gets a big bite of it. Squirt some lime. I can squeeze the lime. I can handle that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I drink a lot of Corona. <laughs> <laughs> Season oil, some fish oil, some olive oil. And stir. Stir, you can stir it up. Oh, it's looking good. So how long do you usually grill it? For like five, seven minutes, no more than that. They are not big cutlets. That looks awesome. There you go. Yum! Spanish mackerel caught fresh from the Coral Sea, just a couple hours outside of Townsville and prepared by this lovely lady. You ready to try it? Yes, please, you're All my right. guest. You do the honors. Oh, thank you. Oh, so, <laughs> whoops. Oh, that's good. That's really good. Nice work. Thank you. Enjoy. Let's go fishing again. All right, everybody. Oh, gosh, that chili pepper is so hot. <laughs> All right, everybody, it's lunchtime. Get on up here. Nothing like eating the food that you, you catch, right? None of it went to waste. Who caught the chili? <laughs> Jesus. Chili your throat. The Guatemalan insanity pepper. Yeah, <laughs> come on. After lunch, the guys set out to terrorize our new neighbors. We finally got a bark out of her. Sadie does not like the drone, and the drones haven't liked us. This is actually our fourth one. I leave the boys to play with their toys, and check out the local strip along the water called The Strand. And run up this big red rock to see Townsville from the top.
hill is close to 1,000 feet high, just shy of what some geologists constitute as mountain status. Meanwhile, back at base camp, drone number four, kaput. Look at this view! Oh my gosh. You can see everything from up here. That's Cleveland Bay. That's Magnetic Island where we're going tomorrow to ride horses in the ocean. What a way to end the day, huh? Another stunning sunset in the Southern Hemisphere. I'm back in London. Just a quick ferry ride away is this little butte. This is Magnetic Island, and it is magnificent. You know what? I think it's time to go topless. <laughs> Woo -hoo, we're going topless! This is Magnetic Island, and what a better way to see it than in a hot pink convertible, huh? Oops, that didn't sound good. I'm not very good at driving this because not only am I now um, driving on the wrong side of the road over here in Australia, but I'm also shifting on the wrong side. I've got the windshield wipers mixed up with the blinker. Let's just hope we don't run into any cops. I'm turn these things off now. <laughs> Look at this view, Sadie. The locals call this island Maggie Island or just the island and it got its name from Captain Cook when he sailed here in 1770. He's of course credited for discovering the east coast of Australia. And the saying goes that his compass on the ship had this magnetic attraction to the island, so that's where uh, the name came from. Shoot, why is it not going into gear? It's so weird shifting on the wrong side of the road. Third gear. Here we go around the corner. Fourth gear. Oh, got it. <laughs> oh, there's the police. <laughs> I feel like Barbie. Just can't find Ken. Woohoo! What do you say we uh, crank the tunes and get our dance on? Wild and free. I traded my wheels for the betterment of everyone on the island, and because the best way to see the island's horseshoe bay is on a horse in the bay. You ready, Crikey? Are you ready? You ready, let's go. Good boy. Good morning, guys, and welcome to Horseshoe Bay Ranch. Uh, my name is Sam, I'll be one of your guides for today. We also have Mia coming along. Um, we're going on a two hour Wishing Beach trek. Um, we'll be heading down to Horseshoe Bay and we'll be taking the horses in for a swim. Let's do it. My buddy Scotty and Christiana come along for the ride. Maggie Island is national parkland and serves as a sanctuary for birds, more than 800 koalas, and kangaroos. We're gonna strip down and check paddles off. We'll ride bear back in the water. Awesome! We made it to Horseshoe Bay! Hardest part. <laughs> All right. Here we go.
Oh, crikey! can't be left out of a swim. Just know for you I travel miles. All words I said keep running through my head. Let it go. Crikey! Today has been an Aussie slang, a ripper. I want to see you shine on. On our next adventure. This is my first Aussie barbecue. We travel up the Australian East Coast. Release me! To the adventure capital of the continent. Why live on the edge when you can jump off of it, right? Three, two, one. So how'd you do as a sound recordist? Really good. You put the earmuffs on, you put the fluffy thing in the sky, <laughs> and you put the lunch pack on, and uh, turn it on, and uh, Sim Salad Beam, you got sound. Did it actually work? It's upside down. That works better. <laughs> ben! <laughs> What's that? Ben, look at your teeth! Oh! Oh! Puncture! <laughs> <laughs> what did Oops. you do? I'm not sure. You're busting out. It's a bit too much pressure down there. <laughs> Scotty! What happened? Drying me in the f***ing water. <laughs> of a thing. I don't know who buys these things that fly up, run out of batteries, and they come down, they don't come back to base when they're meant to come back to. It flew over. There's a button that says it, come home. It flew up, yeah, but I pressed that. So what about all the footage? We're trying to save the footage. There's some good nice. underwater footage. Yeah, we got it flipping and uh, chasing some fish. We're gonna have to start this whole project over. I'm back and under. 